Hey, what's up, everybody? Ampy Flyer. Everybody, there's not many people who ever watch my channel. So, I go over it again and again and again, but yes, I'm an amputee that foot launches a power motor. Today, I'm at my airfield and I'm about to go fly. But I thought it might be quite good to show you, I'm just going to change my angle a minute, what it's like to be an amputee and how I prep to fly. Because obviously, two false legs doesn't make me a normal person. So, I'm going to take you through the process of being an amputee and how I prep. First of all, baby wipes. Being an amputee is a sweaty job. Our legs sweat constantly. And what happens when I sweat, my silicon socks that attach to my legs, they will become very, very, very slippery. So a foot launch would be near on impossible with slippery legs and slippery socks. Because what will happen is my prosthetic leg, the leg here, will slip. I'll show you what I do. Basically, press the button to release my leg. My, release, my leg, it's now off. These are called spacing socks. This is single sock right now because I've driven here. When I fly, I do a double ply. I put two of them on, one leg. That spaces my leg very, very tightly and helps to eliminate any issues when I fly, like my leg slipping. So, silicon sock, and a, this is called a lock pin. As you can see, my legs are pretty bruised up. They don't look too great. And also, the smell can be very overwhelming. First off, I need to clean the silicon sock. Keep it nice and clean. If we don't keep our silicon socks clean, we're prone to infections. So we just basically give it a little wipe down. It's nothing special. It's a simple baby wipe. I just noticed some damage on my silicon sock, which means that it will need replacing at a huge cost. About $1,000 for one sock these are, by the way. So one tissue for one sock. The same works for one leg. So one sock, one tissue, one leg, one tissue. Get the leg nice and clean. Remember, it's a smelly process. When you don't have legs, you sweat like a normal person and the dead skin cells have to go somewhere. They accumulate in the sock. It's a very embarrassing situation when they stink but it's not much we can do about it as amputees and it can be very, very embarrassing. Um, when I used to fly aircraft, you know, could actually smell my legs sometimes in the cockpit and that was very embarrassing for me. I used to go out and I used to cover my legs in Dettol and TCP. Now I'm inspecting my leg for any damage. So basically I look around it as see if there's any blemishes that may get infected. So I just check because if the leg isn't clear of any ingrown hairs, then they'll get infected. So as gross as it is, sometimes I have to pick up my legs. One leg, one sock, one tissue, another tissue, complete. The sock is then put on my leg again. So we have to push the pin all the way down. And then we slide, I've got to put my finger here. If I look there, I can feel the pin. That guarantees I'm going to put it in the center. So when I roll the sock back on, it's pin centers, oh, oh, look at that, completely centered on my leg. One complete. I'm a double amputee. Didn't I tell you that? Oh, I know, I know you know already. Anyway, number two, exactly the same process. Remove the leg. By the way, just an update. This is called an elite blade. It's an extremely good leg. Um, they can take a hell of a lot of a bashing. They're basically an elite performance leg, but still inside the category of normality. You can run, walk, jog, sprint, etc., etc. Um, I fly at the beach very often. What can happen is I get a salt build up and that will just cause loads and loads of issues. It's always good to just give it a quick wipe, you know, like you would at home, but you know, right now I've got a problem here. It's gonna break very soon. This is quite scary. It's another cost for me to come up. Okay, so leg number two, laid down, ready to have Mr. Payne put back on. Okay, spacing sock, as I already told you. Secondary sock. This one is a bad leg, it's in a very bad way right now. It's not very clear on the camera, but that's an incredibly bad bruise. I did a lot of flying last week and I split my stump. Um, I don't know if I can show this, I'll have a go. So basically, please excuse the camera shaking for a minute. I'm gonna try and do this very professionally, but unprofessionally because I'm useless. So let's just shorten that. So here's my stump. Here's the split, just, just here. 
Where is it? Lost it. There it is. Ha! You can feel it. It's here. This here is a split. I can't do much about it, but it's quite torturous. It's very, very painful when I run. It's not painful unless I run. Um, but again, it gives you a good idea of what it's like to be an amputee um, and the torture we go through. And I can show you like the shape of my stump as well, how the scarring is. Um, so basically, this is where the drip, the the drip, went, uh, the bled. Oh, for God's sake, the drain went in. When I had my amputations, I've got a few splits here where the bones attempted to go through. Uh, this is the same. It's where the bone is attempted to go through as well. It can be quite quite painful. Um, and as I said, there's the splits, etc. And you can see the colour is not great. The good thing is I'm a very strong person and I, I tend to get away with more than most people in the way of pain. I can put myself through absolute torture to make sure that I do what I do and how much I love my sport of flying. I tend to cure myself in the, in the gym, uh, work my backside off. And I also obviously fly as many times as I can. Conditions are prevailing. Let's have a look. At the moment, the, I can reverse it actually. Yeah, I can't. Um, the conditions aren't great. It's very, very windy. So I'm going to finish the process for you, explaining how I do everything. Just It gives you an idea what it's like to be an amputee, doesn't it? Especially one of the foot launches. And for any new paramotor pilot out there or new amputee, um, it sort of gives you the inspiration, I hope, that everything is possible, no matter how big or small. Never fear life, be life, live life and enjoy life. Because when we take away everything we've got in our life, we're left with nothing. So why not enjoy it and make the most of what we have left, even if they're stumps, we can do so much more than we, do, than we want to do. We just have to force ourselves. So, hoping to put this camera back where it came from and hopefully keep everything in line. Please, excuse me, I've got to lean. It's not very easy to lean. So the final process as I was doing, that should give you enough of an angle. To try and also stop my camera falling over. There we go. That should stop it. Please don't fall. So there we go. Let's get myself back into shot a little bit more. So we do exactly the same process. We take the cleaning tissues. Baby brands are good. Uh, disinfecting brands are fantastic. I have a two-year-old child with Down syndrome, so this works for me. I can steal his stuff. <laughs> so, process is reasonably quick. You're just trying to get the old sweat off, the old salt, because you don't want to get infected. So notice this hole in my socket is going to be expensive, so I need to be careful with that. Um, the tissue's not discoloured, which means that's a good sign. It's not too bad. Uh, the sock as well, when I clean this, uh, it just takes away some of the residue that's been left behind by my leg, the skin cells, etc. Um, anybody with stump pain, anything you want to eliminate your pains, like you know, if you're getting any chafing or anything, I found that um, Sudacrim is a fantastic brand, really thick, goes on like an oil basically, it goes on like cream, but it just stays in the prosthetic sock for a long time. Um, and then cleaning it's very simple as well. Don't use Vaseline, it leaves a horrible residue and most of the time it's almost impossible to get off. So just double check if this hole's getting worse, that's not cool. So these are brand new, they didn't last me very long. Because I do so much on these. These are a thousand pound a shot, or a thousand dollars. It's a hell of a lot of money for a piece of um, silicon. But without it, we can't do a thing. So swings and roundabouts, I guess. So now I'm making sure that hole went to the back of my leg. So now I'm pushing the air out. So you've got to get the air out of the sock. If there's any air in the sock, that can give you uh, issues like infections later on in life. But I'm itching, I'm not having a, you know. Because um, obviously the sock goes to that point. It's the first time my skin's felt air, oxygen and air for a while. So I had a little hole in the sock here. So I'm going to re-remove this one. I need that, that hole to go behind. So it doesn't stretch anymore and split further down. And that will help um, give you a longer shelf life with these. So that's basically the process of getting ready to fly. And this process is repeated every single time I fly. Whether I've flown once in one day or five times, I will land and I will check my legs. I will clean if I have to clean. If they're sweating, I must clean them. Um, normally after failed attempts of, of takeoff, then I will definitely be cleaning them because they sweat so much. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Ah, looking from the other side. 
These also make very good uh, rests and uh, willy warmers. So there you go. Okay. So that's basically the process of being an amputee for, uh, paramotor pilot foot launches, how I have to deal with it. Um, I try to give a lot of information as an amputee, whether it be about paramotor pilots or about um, flying in general, and also about the pros and cons of being an amputee. So if you feel that I can inspire you or I've managed to help you in a little way, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I can't speak, I'm tired. <laughs> This is coming to you all the way from Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand, and I wish you all a fantastic day and hope that there's some solace in being an amputee in life because not everything is bad. Peace out, everybody.